So today we're dealing with the topic of masturbation. We want to know is it a sin or is it not a sin and what does the Bible have to say about it? Let's find out. So this is a topic that really plagued me for many many years and I had this big question of whether masturbation is a sin or not because I was entangled in masturbation for a very long time and I did not know whether it was a sin or not but I knew for sure that it did not feel good at least not after the deed. So there came a time where I sincerely seeked out for answers you know I, I went to people that I was submitted to and in in the church space of course and I went to my brothers and sisters in Christ my friends and we had discussions around this topic and I found out that I you know you, you know when you're not talking to other people sin can cause you to feel like you are the only one entangled in it and I realized it was a lot of us at that time um, I was still unmarried at the time and I had not met my husband yet but I just felt like uh, and it had nothing to do with me wanting to get married in the future I just felt that this thing that I was entangled with boggled me down it kept me in no perfect peace it kept me in such deep bondage it kept me in such a lot of guilt in all those discussions that I had, I realized one thing, none of us could pinpoint a certain scripture that referenced masturbation as a sin. We all were looking for it, we flocked through the Bible to find it and we found none. And that was very confusing for all of us because we all felt the same way, we felt that um, this is something that's not right in the sight of God. Um, we feel it intensely in our spirits that it is something that God is not pleased with, but we don't have a scriptural reference to it. And so I ultimately turned to God to ask him for answers and I asked the Holy Spirit to really, really help me. You know, my attempts to talk to God about masturbation previously were just um, repenting, very quick repentance and going back to my vomit again after repentance and going back to God again, going back to masturbation, going back to God. And so it went, it was really a yo-yo relationship and and the, the root cause of it or rather one of the addictions and sins that were in my life that caused all of that was masturbation. Not only had masturbation affected my relationship with God, but masturbation had actually exposed me to pornography because um, masturbation is one of those sins where you have to conjure up and have a very active imagination. And that imagination takes you to spaces of past relationships and also it took me to spaces of pornography so pornography is an insatiable slave master right it takes you to the bottom list of pits and it is never satisfied and that's what it did to me it turned my normal sexual appetites because sexual appetites are normal right those are we are have, we have god-given sexual appetites but what it did for me and many other people that i speak to is that it perverted one's sexual appetite to be to and introduced us to thoughts that we probably would not have had had we not switched on to pornography um, and uh, caused us to commit sexual acts that we probably would not have even been exposed to had we not watched pornography and that's how I got introduced into pornography. It was because I had already an addiction of masturbation and I needed fuel and that fuel happened to be pornography to maintain this addiction. So that's how the door of pornography was opened to me. The other thing that uh, masturbation opened up to me is the area of demonic oppression. I ended up being oppressed at night when I'm sleeping, strangers would come to sleep with me, men, women, um, it was the same, it was just strangers that I don't know, these people would visit me at night and it would almost feel like I have no uh, any type of energy or strength to fight them off. And I would wake up really, really 
just uh, with my soul injured and uh, not sure what had happened who those people were sometimes they do or rather they did come because they don't do that anymore but they did come in the similitude of people that I know is either your boyfriend at the time or your crush at the time or it's just plain strangers appearing to you at night and sleeping with you. I had a thing called sleep paralysis. You know that thing that comes onto you when you're sleeping and it chokes you and you feel like you have no energy, you want to fight it, you want to get rid of this thing that's on top of you. You can't even open your eyes. You can't even speak. It's almost like it's holding your tongue. And the only thing that works is when you finally say the name of Jesus, you know, sometimes you have to say it like two, three times in the dream or, or actually in the natural uh, so that the thing can go. So I suffered from that thing because of the doorway that had opened up these demonic oppressions, which was masturbation eventually really out of my vexation i went to god because i had gone to people i had gone to pastors i had gone to friends i had gone to uh, brothers and sisters in christ and we were all in the same boat and we didn't know what to do with this situation that we were in i finally turned to god and i said to god I still don't know whether this thing is sin or not because I don't have scriptural reference for it. But I know that I have no peace because of this thing. I feel guilty all the time because of this thing. I have demonic oppression because of this thing. I have a relationship with you that is of a yo-yo effect because of this thing. And so I just want to get rid of this thing in my life. I don't want it anymore. And you know, God is very faithful um, and he took me to a couple of scriptures and I realized like so many other things in our lives, right? Like for instance, there's no scripture that tells you to get a driver's license, for instance, right? But there is a scripture that infers it, which says that you should obey the, the laws of the land. And one of the laws of the land is for you to be able to drive on the, the roads of the land, you must have a driver's license, right? There's a scriptural reference for it. It's not explicit, but by virtue of it existing, it then infers by default that I should have a driver's license. And so it is with masturbation. There might not be an explicit scripture that tells us that masturbation is a sin but there are scriptures that tell us or that infer to us that by default masturbation is a sin and here are those scriptures and so the first scripture that god gave me and and he gave me in alignment with the question that i was asking the question that i was really pursuant of first and foremost was the fact that I had no peace about this thing. One day I'm up, one day I'm agreeable that no, you know, this thing is normal. Um, and the next day I'm like, no, this thing is not normal. And because the guilt is now affecting me so terribly. And so I had so much, so much chaos inside of me that I did not understand. There was just no peace. And I asked God, um, in line with the fact that let's just say this thing you don't have an issue about it why do I not have peace about it why why immediately after that orgasmic high why do I have do, have, do I have a feeling of being so so low and feeling like I've, I've done something incredibly wrong in your sight and you know one of the scriptures that God spoke to me about pertaining to peace specifically is in Colossians, Colossians 3 verse 15 uh, of the Amplified Version. It says, and let the peace, soul harmony which comes from Christ rule, act as an empire continually in your heart, deciding and settling with finality all questions that arise in your minds in that peaceful state to which as members of christ 
one body we're also called to live and be thankful appreciative giving praise to god always so this scripture told me that i must use the peace of christ to rule as an empire the the peace of god when it has left you uh, that's the spirit of god telling you that this thing is not right i'm not pleased with it you might not know or have scriptural reference to say whether this thing is right or not but you have the witness inside of you that's telling you and that witness is the, the peace of god inside of you if it's not there let it go and that's what god said to me through this scripture that if there is no peace then it is not from me because my peace will cause you to settle matters with finality in your mind pertaining to whether things are good or not things that you can't go to the word to see so the second scripture really addressed the guilt i was feeling right because i've already spoken about the fact that i felt perpetually guilty in front of god and it was so difficult for me to maintain and grow my relationship with god because of the guilt so god gave me romans 8 verse 1 it reads as follows i'm reading from the amplified version uh, therefore there is now no condemnation no adjudging guilty of wrong for those who are in christ jesus who live and walk not after the dictates of the flesh but after the dictates of the spirit oh man this scripture is just so loaded for me um you know it told me that if you are a child of god if you are rooted in christ there is no condemnation you are not judged guilty so the guilt that i was feeling was the guilt that i was um, receiving because I was walking in the dictates of the flesh and not the dictates of the spirit as Romans 8 1 says we should walk in so when I saw that scripture it became it started becoming a prayer point to get myself out of the space of feeling guilty and uh, not not just the space of feeling guilty but acting guilty masturbating when God says I must not walk in the dictates of my flesh whatever my flesh dictates to me I was doing at the time and I had become addicted to it and I had and masturbation had given birth to different things to pornography to demonic oppression and those were the children of the flesh that masturbation had brought forth but God said to me walk in the dictates of the spirit and in that way I will not be walking with guilt and condemnation in my life the third scripture that god gave me is found in first thessalonians 4 verse 4 it reads as follows in the amplified version again that each one of you should know how to possess control or manage his own body in consecration purity separated from things profane and honor so obviously number one i was not managing or controlling my own body my body was being controlled by an addiction that i had and by demonic oppression right it was no longer i that was controlling myself it was no longer my spirit my spirit was warring with the the addiction of of masturbation i was not managing my own body and that's the thing with masturbation it might just start out as an innocent thing that you do but eventually it escalates to a place where it manages you it controls you i know of people that have had to run out of a workspace or work situation or some of them even uh, run out of church to go into the bathrooms to go masturbate when something does that to you when something reduces you to that level then you must know that it is no longer you that controls it but it controls you it controls when it gets satisfied it controls when it eats it controls everything about you you sometimes people cannot even sleep they have insomnia and the only way that they are able to get themselves to sleep is if only they masturbate you are not controlling the habit the habit is now controlling you and the bible says clearly in first thessalonians 4 verse 4 we should control and manage our own bodies we should not be dictated to by any addiction if an addiction is dictating to you 
when and how to live your life then that's already a clue that things have gotten completely out of hand and that you need God's help to solve that situation in your life the fourth scripture I want to share with you that God gave me uh, pertaining to masturbation it's it's it found in Matthew 5 verse 28 of the Amplified Version uh, it says but I say to you that everyone who so much as looks at a woman with evil desire for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart the thing about masturbation is it causes you to not look and it goes for both men and women right it causes you to not look at people with the lens that God looks at people with it causes you to look at people with objectification and with what you can get out of them in that moment let's take pornography for instance in pornography you don't know you don't even know these people these are pure strangers but you're using whatever they they are putting out in video of the sexual act you're using that to ensure that you are satisfied there's some level of selfishness there you don't know these people but you're using their bodies or their imagery to conjure up an imagination that will cause and allow you to get a release I don't know about you but that to me does not sound like looking at people through the lens that God has created um, for them to be looked through and the other thing you know that God just helped me with uh, I remember when one day watching a pornographic video and God said you don't even know whether this girl has been trafficked or not but you're busy sitting there and satisfying yourself watching that that video and you don't know whether this person is being used as a sexual slave for these videos and this person has probably been trafficked yes other people use the pornographic space as a as, as the form of making money and livelihood but um, other people are, are actually trafficked into these spaces and use the sexual slaves and ultimately would take we consume that video we consume people's pain we consume people's brokenness you cannot tell me that God is in a thing like that and it has been proven I saw uh, a, a clip a news clip I think about a year ago I mean, God spoke to me about this about five, six years ago, and I had not had any sense or seen any newsletter or seen any clip pertaining to this until last year, where I saw a clip that actually, uh, where girls were coming out from the pornography industry to say that some of them were trafficked, some of them were sold into these spaces, some of them were kidnapped and stolen and brought into this place, and they were, they, this was not a livelihood. This was a place of bondage for them. And I remember seeing that clip and just saying, thank you, God, for your faithfulness. Thank you that you, you taught me what you taught me, when you taught me. But also thank you that people are starting to speak out of this, out of their experiences with the pornography industry. You know, so this scripture says, if you look at anyone, at a, at a woman with evil desire, for her you have already committed adultery with her in your heart so if you look at someone and you're already lusting after them you've already the bible says you've already committed adultery with a person and it speaks to how we ought to look at people what lens we ought to use when we're looking at people and what lens we ought to use to value people whether people are in the pornography industry or not they are still people that god cares for and because he cares for them we must find a way we must find a way to allow our eyes to see people through the lens that God sees them through you might be asking yourself but Tandi okay I hear all the scriptures that that tell me that by default masturbation is not a good thing it's something that I must not engage in and actually I, it's something that I've known that is wrong and I really want to get rid of it but I keep falling and standing up and falling and standing up like perhaps how I was before um, and I really just want to get out of this what are the practical steps to beating and conquering masturbation I'm glad you asked the first step that God gave me that I'm going to give you as well is number one pray scriptural based prayers pray scriptural based 
prayers i cannot overemphasize this enough uh we yes we live in a natural world but life all of life is spiritual you conquer something by first exercising your priesthood and praying about it yes i prayed about it before but i did not even know what i was doing i was not exercising my priesthood i was standing in a position of guilt and shame instead of standing in my position of authority in the priesthood that god has given me to come boldly as he says into the throne of grace and mercy seeking help for 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 my situation in time of trouble and when i started praying with authority from a place of victory knowing that i am seated far above all principalities powers and rulers and rulers of spiritual wickedness in high places when i got to know that and i was intentional about praying from my priesthood that christ has given me it is only then when I started seeing results and you might be saying okay prayers the first tip I get that I'm gonna pray and I'll pray uh, authoritative prayers going forward what is the actual next step the practical step that I must apply to further ensure that I am um, I've conquered in this journey and I'll tell you the powerful strategies that God gave me after I prayed that really changed my life and revolutionized my life and got rid of masturbation once and for all in my life. Power tip number two for getting rid of masturbation. Be intentional about substituting the habit of masturbation with a new wholesome habit. Be intentional about substituting the old habit of masturbation with a new wholesome habit. That habit for me was every time I was triggered because you're going to have continuous triggers, right? It's not something that's just going to vanish overnight. You will have triggers. And when the trigger happened for me where my sexual urges would hype up, what I would do in that moment is I would dedicate that time to rather praying for people to get saved. I manipulated my system by giving it a whole new, uh, a new wholesome habit to substitute masturbation with. And soon I was victorious for a day, I wouldn't masturbate for two days, for three days, and then hey, it's a month, hey, it's a year, oh my god, it's five years. Um, so, and, and that only came by being intentional to substitute the habit with a new wholesome habit. And that habit for me was prayer. Power tip number three, be intentional about protecting your eye gates and your ear gates. What I mean by that is what are you watching? What are you listening to? There are obviously uh, songs or, or, or genre of music that takes us to a different space, right? That causes us to miss out our, our, our eggs or and cause us to maybe go into spaces where we're remembering how we used to have sex with your ex etc and then obviously that is all triggered so and also the things that we watch on television uh the conversations that we expose ourselves to what are you allowing through your eye gates and your ear gates if you know that porn is the thing that causes you to fall stay away from porn and be intentional about allowing yourself to watch other things pride goes before a fall rather protect yourself than tell yourself that i've got this and protecting yourself requires first and foremost protecting your eye gates protecting your ear gates do not listen to certain things that you know will trigger you and take you down a certain path do not have conversations that you know you know those conversations that come after midnight uh the conversations like oh hey how are you doing those kind of conversations with people that you've been intimate with uh people that you're not even trying to build uh, solid and proper relationships in christ with do not entertain those kind of conversations those are the kind of conversations that keep you going back and forth and back and forth in sin um so know how to protect your ear gates and your eye gates and your conversations 
Power tip number four. Find yourself an accountability partner. Sometimes things are easier when there's someone walking the journey with you, right? Find yourself an accountability partner. Maybe someone that has conquered uh, masturbation or someone that is willing and is committed to conquering it. Find yourself that kind of person. They might be a friend, they might be a stranger, they might be a brother or sister in Christ. Find yourself that person and walk this journey together with. There's nothing like having someone that prays for you, someone that counsels you, someone that encourages you when you fall because the journey out of masturbation is not a linear journey of success. Sometimes you fall, sometimes you stand up. It's an addiction, guys. And if it has become an addiction, you already know that you've tried this and you stopped and you tried this and you stopped. But do it with an accountability partner. Pray for each other. Speak the truth to each other. Do not veil the sin in secrecy because that's where it grows and grows when it's veiled in secrecy. Speak the truth to one another and have people that hold you accountable for the day to know that this is what what you what you conquered in the day these were the temptations that you went through and this is how you became victorious from those temptations power trip number five clean up house by that i mean you cannot say you embarking on this journey of conquering masturbation and yet you are holding on to your a stash of sex toys. That is not commitment. Sometimes commitment requires that you go cold turkey and get rid of everything that will take you backwards or everything that will trigger you. Get rid of it. Clean up house. Cleaning up house for some people might mean uh, cleaning, uh, taking your stash of porn and throwing it away, uh, deleting it from your phone, deleting it from everywhere where you can access it. And for other people, it would mean take up your stash of sex toys and just go throw them out or burn them or whatever you need to do. But clean up house. It will require commitment from you when you have gotten rid of things that you felt were valuable and were helping you to nurture this habit of masturbation. Power tip number six conquer one day at a time right don't look at the next three months or the next year or the next 10 years take it one day literally one day at a time your future literally arrives one day at a time and that's the only thing we have take that day and god says his mercies are new every morning every morning when the day starts his mercies are new. Collect those mercies on a daily basis and say, God, I didn't conquer yesterday maybe, but today I choose to believe in your mercy. I choose to apply myself diligently to overcoming this habit. Take it one day at a time and ask for God's mercy to envelop you on that day and for God's grace to envelop you on that day so that good his goodness and his mercy can follow you all the days of your life but his goodness and mercy follows you all the days of your life but it follows you one day at a time take it one literally one day at a time win one day at a time win one day and collect those days and soon those days collected become a week become a month become a year become 10 years become 20 years eventually you look back and you realize oh my god certain things are not happening anymore i'm no longer demonically oppressed i don't have strangers sleeping with me at night i don't have issues with pornography i don't have a desire to masturbate it doesn't just come overnight guys you take it one day at a time and you grow each day you grow baby steps each day until you are sitting at a mountain of victory but even when you are at the mountain of victory right you do not forget yourself you do not forget that there are things that can 
easily trigger you. You can be set free for 20 years and that one day where you're sitting and thinking and 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 forgetting where God has taken you from and you start playing around with sin again, literally that one day can be the beginning of another downfall. If one day can, can reduce you and cause your downfall, one day can elevate you and cause you to be victorious over the sin of masturbation. So we've come to the end of this video and I really hope that this video was impactful to you, that it provided you with wisdom, that it provided you with ideas that transform you. Please don't forget to like, to share, to subscribe, to comment on the section below. Uh, I would really like to hear from you. What has this video done for you? Um, if, if it resonated with you on a level, please let us know. If it didn't, please let us know as well and tell us why. Um, it would be great to just know and interact with you and just find out where people are in their lives and what God has done for them. And if you've got a testimony to share pertaining to your journey with masturbation, that would be great to hear from. That is all from me today. So until next time, goodbye and God bless.